Good morning, everyone. Please be upstanding for the procession. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. Chancellor of the National University of Ireland, President of RCSI, Deputy Vice-Chancellors, Registrar of the NUI, distinguished guests, graduates and colleagues, I'm delighted and honoured to welcome you to the RCSI University of Medicine and Health Sciences conferring ceremony as we celebrate our graduates today. Before declaring open the conferring ceremony, I'd like to introduce the platform party. Looking at the stage from your right, at the table at the front, we have Professor Michael Murphy, Chancellor of the National University of Ireland, and Professor Deborah McNamara, President of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. Looking to the back of the stage, again from your right, we have Dr. Patrick O'Leary, Registrar of the NUI, Professor Zena Moore, Head of the School of Nursing and Midwifery at RCSI, Dr. Colm Foster, Director of Academic Programs at the Graduate School of Healthcare Management at RCSI. Dr. Marie Morris, Senior Lecturer in Postgraduate Surgical Education. Professor Eva Doherty, Director of Human Factors and Patient Safety, Surgical Affairs at RCSI. Professor Francis Horgan, Director of the MSc Neurology and Gerontology Programs at the School of Physiotherapy of RCSI. Dr. Judith Gilroy, Associate Director of Academic Affairs. Professor Declan Patton, Director of Nursing and Midwifery Research at RCSI. Professor Tom O'Connor, Deputy Head and Director of Academic Affairs at the School of Nursing and Midwifery at RCSI. Ms. Orla Keegan, Director, Director of Bereavement and Education of the Irish Hospice Foundation. Ms. Sarah MacDonald, Executive Director of the Graduate School of Healthcare Management. Mr. Eunan Friel, Managing Director of Healthcare Management at RCSI. Professor Tracy Robson, Deputy Vice Chancellor at Academic Affairs. And Dr. Mohammed El Arian, Candidate for Honorary Doctorate today. My name is Cahal Kelly, Vice Chancellor of RCSI. RCSI degrees are under Irish legislation 
and they are also degrees of the National University of Ireland. It gives me great pleasure now to invite Professor Deborah McNamara, President of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, to come forward and address our graduating class and you, our distinguished guests. <laughs> Chancellor of the National University of Ireland, Vice-Chancellor and CEO, RCSI University of Medicine and Health Sciences, Registrar and National University of Ireland, Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Dean's Heads of School and Staff, Honorary Doctorate recipient, Dr. Mohammed El Aryan, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's my privilege to welcome each of you to the RCSI University of Medicine and Health Sciences conferring ceremony for the class of 2024. My name is Professor Deborah McNamara, and I'm president of RCSI. Today is a very proud day, not just for our graduates, but especially for parents, partners, families, friends, and the whole RCSI community worldwide. Our mission at RCSI is to educate, nurture, and discover for the benefit of human health. We are proud to be ranked in the top five universities in the world for our efforts to address the third UN Sustainable Development Goal which is good health and well-being. Today you will join our global community of more than 32,000 graduates working in over 100 countries around the world, each contributing to our shared vision of improving health and well-being worldwide. We look forward to seeing the difference that each of you will make. On this important day, we applaud you for the resilience and dedication to your studies that you have demonstrated in your journey to this day. Your achievement is immense, but it is only possible because of your determination, hard work, and sacrifice. As a result of your efforts, the qualifications that you receive today will be recognized around the world, and they will signify a new phase in your career that we hope will see you thrive. Our honorary doctorate recipient today, Dr. Mohammed El Aryan, has made exceptional contributions as a thought leader and visionary and we are honoured to welcome him here today and to recognise his impact worldwide, which we very much hope will inspire you on your path as a global healthcare practitioner. I would particularly like to extend a special word of welcome to Professor Michael Murphy, who was appointed Chancellor of the National University of Ireland in October. The ceremonies over the past week are his first with RCSI, and we look forward to celebrating very many more special occasions with him over the coming years. I would also like to acknowledge the academic and professional staff at RCSI who have been an important part of your success. They are entirely dedicated to the education and welfare of students across the RCSI community, and I know that you will join me in thanking them for all that they do. Finally, you should be incredibly proud of what you've achieved so far, and we know that your future holds so much more. We hope that you and those who have supported you will enjoy this very special day, and we wish you every success. Thank you. Thank you, President. We now proceed with the awarding of the RCSI Honorary Doctorate. RCSI's Honorary Doctorate Award celebrates exceptional individuals who've positively impacted in the world through education, research or service. As RCSI staff, we believe our graduates hold similar potential and we aim to inspire and challenge you to make a difference today, your graduation day. Today we confer the award of Honorary Doctorate upon Dr. Mohammed El Arian, President of Queen's College at Cambridge University, I'm now delighted to, invent, to invite our 2024 Honorary Doctorate awardee, Dr. Eliran, to join us at the conferring stage. It gives me pleasure to invite Professor Tracy Robson, Deputy Vice-Chancellor, to deliver the citation for Dr. Mohammed El Arian. President, it is with great pleasure that I introduce our candidate for the RCSI Honorary Doctorate Award, Dr. Mohamed El Arian. A world-renowned economist, Dr. Mohamed A. El Arian is president of Queen's College at Cambridge University 
and is also the Chief Economic Advisor at Allianz, the corporate parent of PIMCO, where he served as Chief Executive and Co-Chief Investment Officer. He is a Senior Global Fellow of the Lauder Institute and Professor of Practice at the Wharton School, University of Pennsylvania. In 2018, he was appointed to the International Monetary Fund's External Advisory Group on Surveillance and Massachusetts Institute of Technology Visiting Committee for the Department of Economics. He was also appointed Chair of Gramercy Fund Management in 2020. He also chairs the board of Under Armour and serves on several non-profit boards, including the National Bureau for Economic Research. Dr. Alarian previously served as Chair of President Barack Obama's Global Development Council, President and CEO of Harvard Management Company, and Deputy Director of the International Monetary Fund. He holds a master's degree and doctorate in economics from Oxford University and received his undergraduate degree from Cambridge University. In addition to his professional roles, Dr. Ellerian is a well-known author and columnist. He is a Financial Times contributing editor and an option columnist for Bloomberg, sharing his insights on global economic policies and financial markets. He has published several books and numerous articles. Some of his most notable published works include his 2008 book, When Markets Collide, Investment Strategies for the Age of Global Economic Change, which was a New York Times and Wall Street Journal bestseller. It won the Financial Times and Goldman Sachs Business Book of the Year Award, was named a Book of the Year by The Economist, and was called one of the best business books of all time by the UK Independent. In 2016, his 2016 book, The Only Game in Town, Central Bank's Instability and Avoiding the Next Collapse, which looks at the role of the central banks and the challenges facing a global economy, was also a New York Times bestseller. His latest co-authored book, Permacrisis, A Plan to Fix Our Fractured World, which addresses global economic challenges and proposes solutions for a more stable and equitable future, was a Times top 10 bestseller. In recognition of his many professional and philanthropic, uh, philanthropic contributions, Dr. Alarian has received numerous awards and accolades. He was on foreign policy's list of 100 top global thinkers for four consecutive years. He received the Egyptian Cancer Network Lifetime Achievement Award for his support of cancer treatment and cures for children in Egypt. The Middle East Institute in Washington, D.C. honored him with a visionary award, recognizing his outstanding leadership in international economic and financial policy, melding creativity and vision with expertise to promote global prosperity. He was inducted into the Fixed Income Analyst Society Hall of Fame. He received an honorary doctorate award from the American University in Cairo and was admitted as an honorary fellow at Queen's College, Cambridge University. Mohammed, we are delighted to welcome you here today to acknowledge your exceptional contributions to global economics and policy. We are very proud that you, as the most worthy candidate, have joined our special graduation ceremony to accept the highest academic award of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, University of Medicine and Health Sciences, the Honorary Doctorate in Science. I now call upon the President of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, Professor De Debna, Deborah McNamara, to make the award. Honorary Doctorate of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. Congratulations. Congratulations and thank you. I'll take one photo there. And I might get you to sign. It now gives me great pleasure to invite our honorary doctorate recipient, Dr. Mohammed El Arian, to address our graduates, staff, and guests. Thank you to the leaders and faculty of this great institution, to the accomplished graduates, to the distinguished guests 
and to the proud and happy families and friends here today. Anna, my amazing wife and I, are absolutely thrilled to be with you. And I'm deeply honored to receive this Doctorate of Science from an institution known worldwide for its excellence in education, healthcare, and research. In our home, it's known for another reason. One of our nieces, Angela Jonu, graduated three years ago from this remarkable institution and is now a successful doctor. It is wonderful to be here, but I must admit to you, it is also intimidating. I find myself in the grips of something that I see in the first year students when they come up to Cambridge, that awful imposter syndrome. Standing here today in front of you, I know exactly how they feel. There are three causes to my imposter syndrome. First, I'm not used to receiving a degree without the pressure of lectures, research, and a dissertation. Forget about all that. Today has been totally painless. Second, as an economist, I spend my time dealing with numbers, and I shy away from the sight of blood and the complexities of medicine. You have antibiotics. In economics, we have amortizations. You have medication. We have backwardation. And you have the elasticity of tissues. We have the elasticity of prices. I'm not trying to play a, ga a word game here, but rather illustrate a very important distinction. Too often, my subject lives in the abstract, while your profession, this faculty, this student body, deals directly with the most important issues of all, health and life. The third reason why I have this imposter syndrome is because when I look at this wonderful audience, I know today is all about you. It's all about the joy of students graduating, celebrating superb accomplishments with family and friends. So the last thing you want is me to be in your way. So I'll be brief. Let me talk about a big picture, a smaller one, and then you. Shortly before his death, Seamus Heaney, one of Ireland's many great poets, said, quote, we are not simply a credit rating or an economy, but a history and a culture, a human population, rather than a statistical phenomenon. His remarks, as many of you know, came in the wake of the European debt crisis that hit Ireland particularly hard. In the eyes of many outside Ireland, this great country was reduced to two things, a credit rating and a risk spread, letters and numbers. But of course, Ireland is so much more. Its proud history, its wonderful people are all embodied in this wonderful gathering and institution. No country is just one thing, and no person is just one thing. You are getting a degree today, but you are so much more than the, than the degree. You are the people, the doctors, the nurses, the academics, the practitioners, the dreamers, and the doers who put critical skills into practice. This brings me to my second point, your chosen profession. What an amazing time to graduate from the RCSI University of Medicine and Health Sciences. If the last few years have taught us anything, it is that a healthy society is key to a prosperous society. In this way, economics and health are closely linked. Economies only flourish when healthcare is a priority especially in a world subject to more frequent and more violent shocks. RCSI's commitment to advancing human health, not just in Ireland, but globally, and the mantle you have all taken will yield dividends for years to come. In this way, today is not just about celebrating what you have achieved, but also, importantly, what you will achieve. We are all excited about your potential to lead, to innovate, and to shape the, health, the future of healthcare for the well-being of so many. 
So whether you specialize in surgery, nursing, midwifery, or healthcare policy, you now have the tools necessary to tackle some of the most pressing challenges that we face. It could not be a more important time for your profession and for what it stands for. Tragically, we live in a world full of horrible conflicts where innocent civilians are killed, international laws are ignored, and medical in infrastructures obliterated. It is also a world that tragically has seen so many brave healthcare, professors, healthcare professionals targeted specifically because they're trying to help others. The graded assets of your chosen profession are not just technical expertise, dedication, and courage. It is how it enables, empowers, and inspires so many in so many places. I stand in awe of you. John Gennett Galbraith, a respected American economist, famously said, quote, the only function of economic forecasting is to make astrology look responsible. Economic forecasting may be dodgy, but here's one prediction that I'm really comfortable making. You are all going to have a very positive impact on many, many lives. Having talked about the system and then about your profession, let me conclude with my third point, you. You will thrive in this next chapter. Yes, there will be hard days, days when you have to take decisions with imperfect information, whether you are diagnosing a complicated disease, assessing trade-offs with different treatments, or reacting to an unforeseen development in surgery. There will be difficult times, and you will have to make those decisions. As an economist, I've spent a lot of time looking at good decision-making under unusual uncertainty. It's not easy, but those who do well have benefited from the kind of education you've received, an education that builds resilience, agility, and open-mindedness. You see, education is not just about what to think and why. It is crucially about how to think. And when the how is instilled in you, you have the resilience to deal with unanticipated shocks, the agility to respond quickly when you get more information, and the open-mindedness to see issues from many different angles. My father taught me a lifelong lesson on this very early on. We were I was 13 years old, and we received four newspapers every morning. My father expected me to read them. Now, at 13, you really don't want to read four newspapers. Maybe, just maybe, I could be persuaded to read one, but four? Plus, the young economist in me, even though I didn't know what economics was at the time, pointed to the cost savings if we reduced from four newspapers to one. But most of all, I was on solid ground, or so I thought, in arguing the news is the news. We don't need four newspapers to repeat what we can read into one. I could not have been more wrong, and my father was right in correcting me. You see, he said to me, it's not about the headlines. It's not about the reporting. It is how the news is interpreted. Each paper had a different set of eyes, a different perspective to what at first glance could be seen as the same thing. And by reading many newspapers, my worldview grew. My dad taught me at an early stage the importance of intellectual curiosity and cognitive diversity. And I've always tried to keep on learning. And I would argue that today does not mark the end of your education journey, but rather the start of a new and exciting chapter of that journey. A couple of weeks ago, I received an email from a parent of a student at our college. Here are his exact words about his daughter. It's very special to see her doing exactly what makes her happy 
at exactly the right point in her life. She said something to me over the summer. Last term, I was so deep into my work, I could actually feel my brain changing. Today is not just a day of great celebration, but it's a reminder of the power of education to change lives and to feel your brain changing. Education in medicine, surgery, nursing, healthcare policy doesn't just create jobs, it saves lives. In a world that's rocketed continuously by crises from climate emergencies to wars, your commitments to excellence, your attention to details, and your passion for improving the lives of others is something that is desperately needed and a commitment that all of us admire. In closing, allow me to leave you with a quote from another of my favorite economists, John Maynard Keynes. He said, quote, the difficulty lies not so much in developing new ideas as in escaping from old ones. As you leave behind the Swan Pub, St. Stephen's Green, as you walk through the doors of the old building, please be bold, push the boundaries of knowledge, question, and look for a better outcome. Thank you again for this incredible honor you've bestowed on me. And just to be clear, there's two parts to my honor. I'm referring to the privilege of both speaking with all of you and receiving this honorary degree from an institution that I and so many others admire. I am proud to join your tradition. I am proud of the work that's being done here. And most importantly, I'm proud of you, the graduates, stepping out into the world to make it a better place. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Kaplan. 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 Thank you,
I will respect any confidential information that is entrusted in me. I will not permit considerations of age, disease or disability, creed, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation, social standing, or any other factor to interfere with my duties in my chosen profession. I will not use my knowledge to violate human rights or civil liberties, even under threat. I will respect the hard-won scientific gains of those in whose steps I walk and gladly share such knowledge with those that follow. I will promote the highest standards of practice, lifelong education and research in the interest of human health. I make these promises solemnly, freely and upon my honour. We now commence with the award of Master of Science. If the graduates could remain standing, pre honorable cancellariae, totique universitas, presento vobus has meus filios et os meus filias, quo sim tamoribus, quam doctrina habiles esse qui admitter, honoris causa ad graduam magisteri scientiae, idique tibe fide mea testor expondeo, totique academiae. I now invite the Chancellor of the National University of Ireland to admit the graduates. Vos at gradum magisteri scienciae. I now invite the President of RCSI to admit the graduates. By virtue of my office of President, I admit you graduates with the Master of Science. Dr. Marie Morris, Senior Lecturer in Postgraduate Surgical Education will now introduce the graduates for the degree of Master of Science in Advanced Clinical Practice. Others may remain seated. I will now introduce the graduates for the MSc in Advanced Clinical Practice. Samuel Joseph Dariam. Gavin Hubert Duffy. <laughs> Lauren Fortune. <laughs> Tafadza Gambinja. Abhishek Kumar Sharma. <laughs> Elena Veliku. <laughs> that concludes the conferment for MSc in Advanced Clinical Practice. Congratulations on your achievement. On behalf of Professor David Smith, I will invite the graduates to come forward for the degree of Master of Science in Healthcare Ethics and Law. Victoria Ballin. Sarah Brennan. Louis Brunton. <laughs> Anne.
Ashling Carroll. Karn Cliff. Emmanuel Dabup. Gordon Farnan. Dermot Hickey. Lorna Irwin. Violet Johnson. Katagaina Kurhaska. Alia Hassan Yusuf Marzouk Yusuf. Sophie Moore O'Farrell. Donica O'Kalig. Rachel O'Keefe. Ashling Redmond. Katrina Sears. Kieran Skehan. That concludes the conferment for MSc in Healthcare Ethics and Law. Congratulations on your achievement. I now invite Professor Eva Doherty, Director of Human Factors and Patient Safety at RCSI, to introduce the graduates for the degree of Master of Science in Human Factors and Patient Safety. I will invite each graduate to come forward. Beth Farron. Joanne Larkin. Sue, Sue Markey. Denise Murphy. Neve Shields. Yvonne Young. That concludes the conferment for the MSc in Human Factors and Patient Safety. Congratulations on your achievements. For the awards of Master of Science from the RCSI Graduate School of Healthcare Management, I invite Dr. Colm Foster, Director of Academic Programs, to introduce the graduates from the Graduate School of Healthcare Management. I will introduce the graduates. Bunmi Adan E.G. <laughs> Ra
Rauda Al Sunbo. Shima Al Basha. Hussein Al Haji. Al Hanuf Al Hamadi. Iman Al Zabi. Darwin Ian Ambas. Zoe Zander Ung in absentia. Sandra Ben Jafar. Christopher Bulger. Brenda Bracken. Ibrahim Boom Jaid. Ellen Butler. Patrick Carr. Marina Carr Moore. Yi Sin Cheng. Lisa Clancy. Aoife Cronin. Orla Crowley. Mairead Cullen. Marion Daly. Shauna Downey. Mary Duggan. Bohira El Gayusi. Mona El Mahoud. Anne Feehan. Tracy Fitzpatrick in absentia. Anne Nicole Gallegos. And Nicole has also won two awards, the Highest Achiever Award,
plus the best contribution in an organizational development project award. Well done, Anne. Paula Gargan. Kathy Gillen. Vasanta Gopalan. Smita Gonasegar. Emma Higgison. Emma has also won the Healthcare Management Award for Highest Achiever. <laughs> Hanan Hussain. <laughs> Barry Hussey. Mohamed David. Homer Alan Jerez. Mary Joseph. Shruti Joseph Pan Aj Ikal. <laughs> Resmi Etup Kachapili. <laughs> Igor Kern. Tony Kataratu Abraham. <laughs> Jared Lamb. <laughs> C. Luck Lau. Gislian Lawal. <laughs> Connor Long. <laughs> Amy Lynch. Fiona Maguire. <laughs> Adawija Diane Mahmoud. <laughs> Eldo Maliel Alias. Mo Ikwan Marion. <laughs> Jisa Matthew. <laughs> Kathy Mberry Kwanashi. Dara McCarthy. Yeah. <laughs> Emma McGorman. Yeah. 
Emer McHugh. Emer has also won the award for best contribution in an organisational development project. Nakita Miller. Amir Mubarak. Gronya Murphy. Rodriguez Rodriguez. Roger Ruhana El Fegali. Sarah Sally. Vinci Velapadi Varghese. Osama Al Abdul Hadi. Owen Begley. Emma Camilleri. Emma has won the award for best contribution in a dissertation. Sarah Casey. Tara Coughlin. Neve Daly, <laughs> Geraldine Donohue, <laughs> Jane Eludo, <laughs> Militia Foster. Sinead Geraghty, <clears throat> Linda Lynch, <clears throat> Linda has also won the award for best contribution in a dissertation, <clears throat> Vinitha Matthew, Sarah Misfar Al Ameri, Jane Murray. Jane has also won the Highest Achiever Award. Neve O'Mahony. Ashley Smith, Aoife Walker, Sheila May Ballybar, Hilary Barry. Maria Eugene Brillantes. (laughs) 
Anne Byrne. John Luelino Pedena Canena, the second. Shane Colgan. Fiona Dunn. Yusuf Rabi Maki El Noor. Khaloud Salim Fatah Faraza. Venus Jane Felix. <laughs> Teofana Gergut. <laughs> Placides Heche. <laughs> Placides has won two awards, including the Highest Achiever Award and Best Contribution in an Organizational Development Project Award. <laughs> Colette Levy. <laughs> Colette has also won a Highest Achiever Award. <laughs> Magdalena Leader. Aileen Long. Tatenda Makura. Elvis Ende. Chayapiwa and Lovu. <laughs> Sheila O'Leary. <laughs> Sheila has also won a Highest Achiever Award. <laughs> Julie Ryan. Shaza Saba. <laughs> Amal John Thomas. <laughs> Savita Vanjari. The Master of Science in Loss and Bereavement is delivered in partnership with RCSI and the Irish Hospice Foundation and awarded by RCSI and NUI. I will now call the following graduates to come forward. Emma Burns. <laughs> Carol Dunn. Paula Goggin. <laughs> Kenneth Quinn. <laughs> Loredana Kuaru. Fiona Desmond. <laughs> Shirley Hoey. <laughs> Margaret McGoldrick.
Elaine O'Callaghan. Mary Sherwin. Titi Lola Sokan. That concludes the conferment for the Graduate School of Healthcare Management. Congratulations to you all on your achievement. For the award of the degree of Master of Science in Urology and Gerontology, I now invite Professor Francis Horgan, Director of the MSc in Urology and Gerontology from the School of Physiotherapy at RCSI to introduce the graduates. I will now introduce the graduates. Kyla Ashmore. Gemma Foley. Mary Hart. And Mary is also the recipient of the First Place Award. <laughs> Sheila Lacey. <laughs> Felix Moon. <laughs> Neve Shine. Claire Smith. Fiona Smith. That concludes the conferment of MSc in Neurology and Gerontology. Congratulations on your achievement. For the award of the degrees of Master of Science from the School of Nursing and Midwifery at RCSI, I now invite Head of School Professor Zina Moore to introduce the graduates. I will now introduce the graduates for the School of Nursing and Midwifery. Advanced leader Leadership, Manjula Baby. <clears throat> Emer Brockel. Sandra Carrick. <clears throat> Linda Doyle. <clears throat> Sarah Dignan. <clears throat> Vinnie George. Anita Graham. <clears throat> Lissy Jacob. <clears throat> Babita John. Benita Joy. <clears throat> Alison Kyo. <clears throat> Deepa Chako Kalatakudi. Alexandra Lobont. <clears throat> Joanna Lurian.
Kira Mulvaney. Elise P. John. Amrita Pandey. Srijit Rakmachandram. Ditti Shane. Catherine Swamidas. Mary Aldahanan. Leah Vinzons. Advanced Practice, Olive Asuncion. Sonia Brown. Deirdre Noon. Honey Vincent. Advanced practice with prescribing, Andrea Ballon. Sharalata Barrowa. Eva Graydon. Natalie Jayasuria. Joanna Lamb. Andrea Moroni. Marie O'Connor. Marie has also been awarded the Advanced Practice Award. Chelsea Sutton. Sarah White. <laughs> Coronary Care Nursing. Jatrina Joseph Arulanatham. <laughs> Bindu George. Brida Hennigan. <laughs> Ria Ipe. <laughs> Emergency Nursing, Laishimi Nair. Gerontological Nursing, Shiji Devasi. <laughs> Saravanan Gopaswamy. <laughs> Emma Hart. Maggie Comban John. (Applause) 
Olubusi Majaro. <laughs> Cynthia Onwanko. <laughs> Chajini Sebastian. Sunu Sebastian. <laughs> Infection Prevention and Control Nursing, Bukola Adiemi. <laughs> Elaine Doherty in absentia. Agniska Janika. Anne Mary Joseph. <laughs> Remy Matthew. <laughs> Maraid McNulty Casserly. Sean Henry Suko. <laughs> Care of the surgical patient, Ligi Chaco. <laughs> Kira Fury. Ligi Kuriakosi. <laughs> Neonatal Intensive Care Nursing, Maria Vanessa Magnaye. <laughs> Neve Mulvahill. Neve has also been awarded the Research Communications Award. <laughs> Nursing, Renu Abraham. Okay, sorry. Okay, sorry, Neve. Neuroscience Nursing, Neve Byrne. Nursing, Renu Abraham. <laughs> Athira Augustine. <laughs> Geraldine Chalk. <laughs> Leanne Connell. Resmi Devasia. <laughs> Paula Finnegan. <laughs> Tracy Frar. <laughs> Sinead Healy. Gina Mary Joseph. <laughs> Laura Kelly. <laughs> Paula Laurie. <laughs> Cindy Manny. Melissa Martin.
Ugoletu Matshazi. Celine Mutukmaran. Gillian O'Leary. Katie O'Neill. Stephanie O'Reilly. Akil Sadanandan. <laughs> Romeo Junior Vigenzio. <laughs> Orthopedic Nursing, Emily Grunner. <laughs> Emily has also been awarded the Mary Frances Crowley Award and is this year's valedictorian for the MSc Nursing Class of 2024. <laughs> Kira Meehan. Anupama Munambath. Aaron Murphy O'Connor. <laughs> Leontina Stefania Sturb. <laughs> Perioperative Children's Nursing, Jubilee Dongo. Perioperative Nursing, Rigi Jacob. <laughs> Sigi Samuel. <laughs> Renal Nursing, Keely Jackson. <laughs> Respiratory Care Nursing Practice. Ron Godafel Alforque. <laughs> Miguel Austin Gabuzan. <laughs> Carolina Glomba. Barbara Lockman. <laughs> Precious Oshako. <laughs> Jency Thomas. <laughs> Wound Management and Tissue Viability. Sefawala Adidije. <laughs> Celine Chapman. <laughs> Carol Cronin. <laughs> Leanne Darby. Sheena Lynch. <laughs> Liliana Morier. <laughs> Forget Topa.
that concludes the conferring of the School of Nursing and Midwifery. Congratulations on your achievements. Pre honorables cancellariae, Totoque Universitas, Caramonus Ritic Infectus Queos Facis Henum Heus, Convocationis Universitariae, that completes the RCSI and NUI conferring ceremony. Congratulations to our new graduates. We now proceed to the student valedictorian address. It gives me great pleasure to invite Emily Gruner from the School of Nursing and Midwifery to come to the lectern to address us. Chancellor of the NUI, President of RCSI, Vice-Chancellor, Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Members of Faculties, Heads of School, Distinguished Guests, Fellow Graduates, Families and Friends, Good morning and congratulations to the Class of 2024. It is truly an honor to be a part of this special celebration as we gather together today, decked out in our finest outfits and proudly cloaked in our graduation gowns to celebrate our collective victory. We have come so far from our student days as undergraduates, a time in our lives when we had such different perspectives, goals, responsibilities, our time in RCSI has been quite different. We have encountered countless challenges, both academic and personal. I, like many of us today, struggled through my studies while also working full time. However, I looked in awe at my peers, some of whom completed a degree in a foreign language, maybe having last written an essay years, even decades before, and a lot with a family at home, demanding their time and attention. In Irish, we have a saying, fine cus er sul, rud nach fine cus in a coney. This means that a walking foot will come across something that a resting foot wouldn't. Although we all had moments of doubt, and believed the obstacles ahead of us were insurmountable. We kept walking. And the passion and bravery that pushed us to start this journey carried us forward to today. This journey could never have been achieved without help. I would like to thank all of our supervisors on behalf of everyone graduating today, with a special mention to my supervisor, Dr. Vishnu Ranjit, who was always so patient and willing to repeatedly clarify our many questions. Thank you to those hospitals and employers who sponsored us, recognizing the value that our education brings back to them. Finally, I would like to say thank you to our families. The people who are now essentially experts in our chosen thesis topics. <laughs> However, they chose to show that support be it, it's time to put the work away and rest, or I think you've had enough rest. Your assignment is due tomorrow. We appreciate it all. Like most of us, my parents were my first teachers. Together, they taught me that I should be kind in everything I do, that I should think critically and question the world and most importantly, that I can achieve everything that I set my heart on. As I look out at the audience, I see a host of intelligent and passionate people who have devoted themselves to being leaders of healthcare in Ireland. As we see the next generation of new graduates starting in our hospitals this month, I urge you to lead them with kindness, teach them to think critically, 
and encourage them to achieve their own passions. For all they have to do is lift their foot and start walking. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Well spoken. It now gives me great pleasure to invite the Chancellor of the National University of Ireland, Professor Michael Murphy, to address us. President, Vice-Chancellor, Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Registrar, Dean, colleagues, guests, above all, graduates, and among you, our honorary graduate, Dr. Elia Ellery. I stand between you and your family celebration, so it's going to be two minutes. <laughs> my first duty and my pleasure is to welcome you into membership of the National University for life, especially if it's your first degree, and to remind you, of course, that it's for life as long as you do not, do not commit a criminal offence, in which case it can be taken back. But that will not happen given the commitments you made this morning. But I want to offer a sincere word of congratulations to each and every one of you for a high achievement. You're not here by accident. Uh, as Emily just pointed out, it's a tough road to a postgraduate qualification because many of you, are, of course, are balancing study with employment, caring for family. It's not easy. So, you have shown a lot of ambition, determination, stamina, intellectual rigor, and it all bodes very well for a successful career serving your patients. I salute Dr. Mohammed El Aryan for a stellar career in economics and public policy, and I thank him especially for his willingness to stand up this morning as a role model for everybody here, for the next generation at RCSI. And I want to thank him also for a humble and inspiring speech. <clears throat> Academia is a team sport. You are successful based on your own attributes, but of course the support of your family, uh, your mentors, and especially your teachers. And I want to thank the faculty at RCSI for all of their contributions to your success over the last couple of years. So, thank you. And I congratulate the faculty here. It's interesting to watch the portfolio of programs offered here this morning. And it is a testament to the alacrity of the college in seeing needs, needs uh, in healthcare and the professional needs uh, of the workforce in healthcare. And they come forward very quickly to fill the new gaps. So well done to the college. On this, in this regard. So, wherever you go in life, I have no doubt that you will be worthy ambassadors for the Royal College and for the National University of Ireland. And I wish you every success and happiness wherever life takes you. Well done to everybody. That's it. Thank you, Chancellor. And that concludes the RCSI degree conferring ceremonies and presentations of awards. Once again, sincere congratulations to all our graduates. As has been said, 
It's no mean achievement to complete a postgraduate degree with all the commitments of work and family. And can I perhaps ask you, our graduates, one more time to stand up and turn to face your supporters and acknowledge their contribution to your success today. After the outward procession, we'd like to invite our new graduates and your family and supporters to join us for the conferring reception. And now, if I could please ask you to be upstanding for the outward procession. Thank you. Thank you. 